Hi everyone, Happy New Year. It's 2018 already. If you've been following our conversations, thank you so much. We really appreciate it and do stick around for more in the months to come. And yes, you're tuned into Safe Space where life questions are talked about from theological perspectives. And my name is Debbie, your host for this month's episode. How dangerous is hate knowledge? If knowledge puffs up, should we just ignore it altogether? And if Greek philosophy was considered so contrary to the cross, how did it come to shape Christian theology as we know it today? Join me as I speak to Christian thinker and columnist Dr. Elwin Lau for a conversation on his columns, The Cross, and how Greek philosophy, or in his words, pagan philosophy, has shaped Christian theology. Dr. Elwin Lau is best known for his column in the Malay Mail Online, where he comments and even critiques life and culture in urban Malaysia and all the trappings of modern living, such as consumerism and even the drive to perform, among other matters. He challenges the practices of urban lifestyle that we have taken as normal and questions the why of what we do. Dr. Elwin Lau has a Bachelor's Degree of Divinity from the University of London and more recently completed his PhD in political philosophy. His areas of interests include philosophical theology, Malaysian studies, religion, and apologetics. Check this out. Okay, we are on. Okay, great. Hi, <laughs> great. Hi Alvin. Thank you so much for coming and spending this time with us. Thank you. Yeah, so um, you are a columnist for Malay Mail Online. That's right. And. Um, Awesome articles uh, uh, on life, I think. How, but how would you describe your column? Uh, well, it's well. First of all, to be very honest, it's just really a, a moonlighting gig. Um, I don't earn a lot of money, so I call them yet some money. Um, but other than that, it's a way to um, express uh, th three areas of my thought: um, education, uh, politics, religion, and a bit of philosophy. So it's kind of like three and a half areas. It's a way of trying to test out some ideas with the Malaysian news portal reading population. Um, and I know it will be safe because if it's not safe, my editor will just knock it out. So well, that's, that's, the, that's the purpose of the column. How do you choose what you want to write about? That is a good question. I <laughs> <laughs> often, well, there, there are multiple ways. Um, sometimes I'm reading a book, like for example, I mean the, the one that came out today is on exchange value and use value. And the only reason I wrote about that was because on Friday I was reading something about Freud and he was talking about exchange value versus use value. And on the spot I decided to write about exchange value and use value. Um, other times I, 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 I read about, let's say, a pertinent issue like, you know, royal riches are fighting in the streets. You know, suddenly I said, oh, let's write about that. Um, very rarely, um, I get a very nicely placed, kind of like open shot. It's a chance to talk about Christian doctrine in public life. So for example, the, you know, the, the most popular one I think was Zakir Naik and, and the Christian doctrine of Trinity. It just so happened that uh, my friend Joshua uh, posted something about his views, I mean, his, his, Zakir Naik's views on the Trinity and I thought, hey, you know, when I read Zakir Naik's views, I thought, hey, I, is, this is a chance to explain to kind of like the Malaysian, the Malaysian community about the Trinity. So yeah, um, it's not enough, the, the sources, the inspiration, so mm -hmm. and so. Yeah. So you're basically a Christian voice um, in, uh, you know, in the public sphere, so to speak. Yeah, well, yeah, I'd like to be a Christian voice, um, but to be honest, it's not my primary thing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think if you do a statistical count of my, my articles, probably 30% would be on Christian doctrine, yeah. and yeah, there will be another forty percent will be on education, and the other thirty percent will be mixed of uh, religion and so on. So I particularly like um, one kind. I mean, a particular category of your right. writings that talk about slowing down, and also challenging uh, this uh, tendency for us to want to be achievers, you know, sure. and to yeah. just strive, you know, just very quickly. What are your thoughts about 
um, that slowing striving, down part. Yeah, the slowing down part. Yeah, one of the, the, the big problems I think in Malaysian community is this thing of what I like to call success porn. You know, success porn, which is the message that we're bombarded every day, you know, especially if you go on LinkedIn and Facebook, you see many memes and so on. So is it memes or memes? I don't know. Memes? Memes, okay. <laughs> Where you know you gotta do 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 achieve 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 you know work 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 earn 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 and so I think you know since we're talking about Christianity I I, I think that fits in very well in, in line with what Jesus is talking about you know the um, you can't serve two masters you know either God or Mammon and I think success porn or you know this whole achievement mentality is today's manifestation of this Mammon worship and so yeah I. I I like to take pot shot of that, you know, especially, you know, we are in an Asian community with all our use of Chinese, ngai, 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 na, you know, so I think it's worth, uh, worth talking about, especially with growing uh, rate of student suicides and mental health and things like that. Yeah. And that leads nicely on about <coughs> um, how you, your public persona, you know, your packaging tends to be, right. you know, rough and tough, yeah. you know. You, as a Christian, you don't shy away from saying things like right. success porn, right? Yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then, you know, sure, it's, sure. it's kind of like, wow, you know, we <laughs> have a Christian and maybe, you know, for, yeah. for myself, uh, yeah. So is that, uh, is that who you are? Um, or is that a tone that you choose to, um, choose to use, you know, to right. convey your message? Yeah, um, that's who I am um, when I teach. That's who I like to be uh, when I'm facilitating workshops and training. And that obviously that's what I like to be when I'm writing, um, because the 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 weird thing I, I, I about me is that I I'm um, I would rather you say my article was terrible than you saying that my article was boring. So I got this uh, paranoia about being boring. I don't know, maybe it's, it's my own head issue or something there. So hence um, my frequent use of. Uh, let's say non-conventional terms and stuff like that. Maybe another source of this this thing is because I, I I'm a big fan of stand-up comedy and Robin Williams and all these people and so and I spend sometimes I spend hours just watching them and so I, I suppose it gets into me, you know how every line has to be different and I I really hate it if. Someone would tell me that when he read the first paragraph, he knew what I was, I was going to write the second paragraph. So that, that's the stuff that I'm trying to avoid. You know, the whole, I'm just trying to shake things up, so to speak. Yeah, mm. that's me. Okay, great. So we're going to go straight into uh, our chat sure. now. <coughs> so um, <coughs> when it comes to thinking, and mm, you do a lot of reflection, but also right. a lot of thinking, a lot of um, people call as... Um, uh, being intellectual in right. that sense. Right. So I think in many Christian circles, you know, sometimes we are taught that head knowledge can be dangerous, yep. you know, if yep. we are being bit a bit too intellectual sure. and can be dangerous to our spirituality as opposed mm. to hard knowledge. So right. there seems to be a kind of like dichotomy. Um, but, you know, I always ask, really, can the head really be, you know, yeah. separated from the heart? How, how do you think about the use of our heads, yeah. you know? Um, I was just reading up, I was just doing a piece on divorce and remarriage. Um, and I, you know, the, the famous phrase, what God has put together, let no man what's it? break asunder. Yeah. So I think, yeah, um, heart and head has been put together by God. Um, and so I think they should be, they should be together. Um, I think what the proper Christian objection towards head knowledge per se is when the head knowledge is divorced from faith, mm. when the head knowledge is presented as proud, cocky, know it all, like a Big Bang Theory, Sheldon Cooper kind of thing, oh, I know everything, I know everything. So yeah, um, that, that is worth, that, the kind of head knowledge for the head knowledge sake is worth rebuking. Mm. Um, but of course, as in Moting's life, that we, we tend to go to the opposite extreme, which is, we get a we, we give the impression that therefore all you need is hard knowledge, which is not true. Obviously, yep. I think um, I think people like Paul, for example, and Jesus, of course, you know, were incredibly smart. And what we need to do is to recover to to recover um, a very what I call um, I think anti right and some people call it chastened rationality. So it's rational. It's it's strong. It's you know it's very intellectual. It's very even argumentative, but it's chastened. I mean, it's not runaway rationality. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's warm rationality, and it's very open-hearted. So, so 
definitely, I mean, the, the long and short of it is that Christians still need to think. Um, and of course, we still need to read. We need to analyze. We need to study. But we do so in the spirit of, of, of humility and, and, you know, and openness. Mm. Yep. So, um, do you think that this kind of warning actually shuts out those who do want intellectual engagement? Right. Or do you think everybody should in be involved in well, this kind uh, of engagement? Okay, I'll answer a second. I don't think everyone should be involved. Mm. Um, but maybe, let me deal with that by talking about the first. I think it will not shut out people who are really keen. In fact, I think this you know, this positive intellectualism is a little bit like desire, you know. If you shut it out, <laughs> if you repress it, the more it will grow. Mm. Um, and I think I, you, you take the average, uh, you know, kid in church who's, you know, has got a lot of questions and, you know, a lot of intelligent thoughts. Mm. And if you tell him to keep quiet and don't do that, he's not going to do it. I mean, he, so he's not going to obey you. He's probably going to continue thinking, continue talking, continue arguing, and worst come to worst, he'll do it in another church. So, that's my <laughs> quick answer. Now the second, what, what was the second question again? Um, do, do I think everybody, right? Yeah, do you okay. think everybody um, should be encouraged to sort of pursue a more... <clears throat> okay, I, I would, a uh, simple answer would be no. Um, I think everyone, for example, everyone, if let's say Ron Chung comes to PJEFC, and that was the last time I was here, but <laughs> I think sure, we should open it to everyone. There's no one should say you should, you should not attend Ron Chung's seminar. But um, having said that, I, I personally don't think that everyone has the, the aptitude, mm -hmm. the acumen of going deeper. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and I, the reason why I said it is just, mm -hmm. like, just like, for example, not everyone can be an outdoors person. Yeah. Not everyone can climb Mount Kinabalu. Not everyone can be a missionary to Mongolia and all that kind of thing. Um, because I think there's some innate gifts and, and you know, community issues. and. Um, okay, just just a quick. Note. I understand why some Christians may object to, to intellectual knowledge because maybe perhaps in their past they have been they have been what's the word um, they have been bitten or mm. they have been burned. Yeah. Because sometimes, um, in fact, all the time, if if I as an argumentative person really just kind of like do do cognitive violence violence upon you or violence upon someone that I disagree with that could really turn off that person. And that person may, may, reject, um, you know, may reject theology, re reject doctrine, because I committed violence upon him. Mm -hmm. So, again, I would say the people who should go into these kinds of, for lack of a better word, cognitive, <laughs> cognitive or intellectual ministry, mm -hmm. should be people who are prepared enough or have the acumen, the aptitude to be able to deal with cognitive violence. Because when you start arguing with some people, don't even have to be atheists, can be fellow Christians as well. There will be a lot of, um, mm. uh, what's the word, pushbacks. You know, there, there will be a lot of uh, even harshness and some mockery as well. So not everyone can deal with that. Mm. Yep. So I think uh, when I asked you to, uh, have to, to come in and have uh, this conversation, um, we wanted, I wanted to talk about 1 Corinthians 1. Right. Uh, 18 to 31, which sure. is uh, people commonly use <coughs> to say, look, let's not think too much. Yeah. You know. uh, and I'll read, you know, for the word of the cross is folly to right. those who are perishi perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise, who is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what to be preached to save those who believe. So has not God made foolish the wisdom uh, of the world? Um, what, what does this actually mean uh, in Paul's context? Like what was he talking about this wisdom of the world? And why did, it was kind of like, uh, yeah, what was Paul sure. saying? All right. Um not a Pauline scholar, but I, my understanding of that passage is basically Paul is just really, really passionate and upset about the fact that his, his, his flock, you know, his church, is constantly being berated by all these, you know, 
attackers of, of Christianity, the skeptics who use Greek philosophy, and of course that's one angle. Sorry, that's one invasion. The other invasion was from the Jews. So you had the, the, the Jewish people were saying that you know you, you guys are you know, fake Messiah, blah, blah blah, and the Greek people are saying that you guys are stupid <laughs> or something. So I think Paul, in, you know, it was like he was just pretty bit cheesed off, and so he grabbed on to the one thing that we should all grab on, which is the cross. You know, because the cross, yeah, what was it? Foolishness, the Greeks, and something, right? So stuff, something about, about the Jews. The cross is the one thing that really cheeses off um, philosophers and thinkers who don't believe. It just goes against everything. Mm -hmm. It goes against the spirit. In fact, you don't even have to look far. The cross even takes off Christians as well. <laughs> In politics, especially, so it's there's just something about the cross which goes against human nature, almost mm. like that. And part of human nature is, of course, human philosophizing and humans attacks. So um, now, quick excursus. I don't believe that that verse is Paul saying to Christians that you should never, ever, ever, ever read philosophy and stuff. I don't believe that. That's what Paul is saying. Mm. Paul is saying he's applying the cross to a very specific very specific attacks against the faith. And yeah, fair enough. Um, every time people imply that, you know, I think there's a Cantonese phrase, Gong uh, so you know, talking Jesus is talking nonsense and you know, talking, sorry, you know, whatever. Um, those are the, the instances where that passage would apply. You know what? And Paul was saying, yeah, in the worldly sense, yeah, you guys are smart, you know, you always think that Jesus is stupid, blah, blah, blah. But in the Christological sense, or in order, you know, I don't know what's the word, um, cruci, the cruciform sense, no. Um, it, is an entire, it is an entirely different ball game, mm. right? The cross really shows you a different reality than, than what you guys are used to. So again, to, to repeat, um, I don't think that passage is a passage against head knowledge. I believe that that passage must be read in the context of Paul's uh, throwbacks against his um, his, his opponents. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Just to like dive, uh, <coughs> just a little diversion. Sure. It's kind of like that like you mentioned and you pointed out that uh, the cross is foolishness, is yeah. folly, yeah. and uh, the Greek philosophers would be like, "What? This is stupid!" You know, I'm like, "How can you believe such yeah. a thing?" Yeah. Um, but yet. Today, uh, Christians are busy trying to prove that um, the Christian faith is superior. Um, mm. Do you think it's ironic that we are trying to contest uh, with um, the other kinds of worldviews around us when actually it's found to be folly? You know, so here we are, you know, trying to be okay. bigger okay. and better. Okay. Well. Um a quick statement would be that I think it's fine for Christians to try to persuade other mm. people mm. that um, Christianity is true, that resurrection you know, happened and so, and so forth. I think that's, that's part and parcel of, of, uh, of evangelism, in fact, you know, to persuade. And to persuade usually involves argument, and it usually uh, argument is thinking and stuff like that. So persuasion means you need to have some kind of head knowledge there. Mm. Um, then again, Fair enough, the folly, I think, is, is a matter of believing that I, it's folly to try to, to beat the world mm. at its own game. So it's folly, I think, if you try to, okay, I'm going to use all the assets and all the arsenal of the world, all the values and all the, what do you, what do you call this, all the tricks and techniques of the world, in order to prove to the world that my faith is the one. And of course, if I don't win, I get upset. Da, 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 da. And I think that's what Paul is, Paul is getting at. Don't try, to, don't try to beat the world at its own game. Mm. You present your case and you do so with patience da, 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 and um, God will honour your efforts. You know? But again, don't go, and, you know, go, don't, don't go and deny you know, the value of thinking and so on and so forth. Mm. Yep. Okay. God questions? Connect with us. Send us a tweet or an email.